These materials are <clears throat> grounded in behavioral uh, communication, risk communication science, but there's also an element of um, not letting the good be an enemy of the great. <clears throat> so what I'm showing you today, we've tried to build upon our understanding as far as possible in the way we've developed them, um, in the way we imagine uh, they would be implemented, in uh, the, the design and the layout of the materials, and also, of course, the content. But the, the, the big caveat is we want to test, we're going to test, and so it's fantastic to hear, you know, Jess's overview of how we might go about that. And you know, imagine that we'll be in touch with many of you to ask for your inputs and advice on, on how we can do that best um, and, and put this into a, a continual improvement process. The last caveat is that we're looking to roll this out on a global level. So these materials are fairly generic, which is a bit of a risk, but we imagine that each of the materials, this, this package would be adapted at a country context um, you know, both with country-specific data, but also, you know, per perhaps uh, different adaptations to, to suit the cultural context. <clears throat> so the method we're developing, where, where we, we hope to give uh, health professionals a way of understanding, not only uh, of understanding the who, who's sitting in front of them, of having a how, how do you manage the conversation, and we also want to give them the what, but the what is often um, where many interventions have stopped, you know, throwing information over the fence and then wondering why people um, don't change their attitudes or their behaviour. Just a couple of top line principles that we, we gave actually to the team that did the design and layout. So first of all, um, we wanted vaccination to be an aspiration. This is how uh, we sell Coca-Cola and BMWs, and yet we seem to try to continue to flog vaccination as an act that involves a needle. And then we wonder why people aren't that enthusiastic. Um, <clears throat> we want to show the, the, the aspiration, the outputs of vaccination, healthy, happy, productive people. Um, number two, I said no needles. If I see a needle, you're fired, we're going to use another agency. I cannot tell you my reaction after seven or eight years in this field where I still see needles appearing in the media, appearing in materials that people create with, with an aim of, 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 of increasing people's intention to vaccinate. Number, the third principle is we did not want to trigger any new concerns that people might not have. So there are no 20 myths busted because when you bust one myth, the person reads the other 19 myths and you start to put ideas in their heads. I asked them to make it attractive. People trust Beauty, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a cognitive effect. I asked them to make it easy. The easier things are, Kahneman, Sversky, the easier things are, the truer they are to us. <clears throat> These are just some of the top line principles that I gave to the design team. Then, <clears throat> based on um, studies that we did with Nick, um, who's not here this morning, so we, I've presented this data before, but qualitative, like a, a mixed method approach, qualitative studies, then quantitative cross-sectional studies in now seven countries, um, large um, representative samples, uh, about 130 items looking at adult vaccination specifically. What emerged from those studies is at the very least, each of the components of the protection motivation model, which is kind of a an update of the parallel processing model, which is a model that describes how we manage threats or fear. Each of the components of that model emerged as significant correlates in our, in our studies. And so I'm not going to go into this in detail, but essentially um, when we're presented with a threat, we appraise the threat, but we also appraise our ability to cope with it. And when we appraise the threat, this is both a cognitive and an emotional thing. And in fact, what came through in our data was it's more emotional than cognitive. So disease severity is important, but it's my feeling of susceptibility, which is built up of my feeling of vulnerability to whatever you're presenting, the disease you're presenting, and the likelihood that I might catch it. So there's an availability element there. And then we are, of course, in parallel saying, well, what is my ability to cope with this? And if there's no ability to cope, then I do nothing. If you really get the threat right, but give me no ability to cope, I, in fact, enter into maladaptive coping. And I, I may actually resist the coping response that you're presenting. So people also have to be presented with self-efficacy, response efficacy, and they need to know about the cost of the response. So we designed um, materials both for the waiting room and then for the, for, the, for the consultation room. The materials in the waiting room are what I touched upon, they're aspirational, but they also push upon the various buttons of protection motivation. And the materials in the clinic are more specifically um, designed to support 
uh, responses to specific concerns that, that somebody may have. <clears throat> the posters, they're green. <laughs> Okay, they're natural, the kids are happy. Uh, they're being protected by the, per the parent or the grandparent holding them. We have a number of catchphrases that I can't tell you the trouble we went to to get this approved internally in our organization, but we say things like vaccines uh, enhance your natural immunity, uh, protect your tomorrow. The tagline of the campaign is protecting tomorrow today. People protect, they don't prevent. Saad touched upon that yesterday. The aim of these materials is to prime people for the conversation. And so we also have, you see on the bottom left there, and we'll show you some of these. You can pick up these materials um, at the break and have a poke through them um, through the rest of the meeting. I'm showing you this today because I'm really interested in people's feedback. What have we got right? What have we got wrong? Even though we haven't yet tested them. Those, that Z card actually contains a number of the, 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 the um, components of protection motivation. You see there, for example, we have um, availability, we have vulnerability, we have a grandmother uh, cradling a grandchild, and around her is the information about the diseases, and the information there touches, I think, Saad's point of disease salience. We don't just talk about death, we talk about the sequelae of some of these diseases that are far more terrifying even than death. Um, so that's an example of how we're trying to present the information in a way that might stimulate both a cognitive but also an emotional response. Um, you can pick up these materials and have a look at it. Um, for the clinic, we've developed a small flip chart. We're not sure if this is going to be used or not, but the idea is to support the conversation. There's a side facing the, the provider and there's a side facing the patient. The side facing the patient is simple just a few um, top line points that we might want them to retain. The side facing the, pro the healthcare provider has um, verbatim, so it has the data, it has the knowledge that they should have to be able to respond to the question. Um, we've based this around the fuzzy trace theory of risk communication. People, when they, when they process um, a risk, they process both that information, that verbatim information, but also the, the gist, the bottom line meaning. So we give that to the provider for them to, to give to the patient, but we also encourage the provider in that blue comment, and again, my point is I'll, I'll ask you to look at the materials. The materials are too detailed for me to put up on the slides. The gist, what is the bottom line thing? And that is what the person will remember. They will, they will process both of those, but they're most likely to remember that bottom line gist statement. Um, and then we have specific cards uh, addressing specific concerns. Um, you know. Very, very simple, three points only, that's what people remember. The aim is that if a conversation turns around a specific concern, the card may be used to reinforce the conversation, the person can take that home, it can, it can be used for them to refer to again, or maybe to, 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 to trigger an ongoing um, conversation when they come back into the clinic. That's it, so the reason I've presented this as I've told you, um, is first of all to show that there are different ways we can come at this. We're, we're starting to develop an evidence base we're trying to, to, to pull that into these materials, but we really need to test it and we may find that we're off track. That's the way things work. The key is use the evidence as much as, po as, much as possible, test as much as possible. And also, this is a place where we share, where we see what each other's doing. And you know, I really hope that this continues to be, we continue to nurture that kind of collegiate community spirit. And so that's why I'm asking you for your input on this. And so anyone, if anyone has any comments or anything on those materials, see myself, or please uh, see Nathan. So Nathan Mugan, I'd like to credit him. We've been working on this together for the last six months. Uh, he's done a lot, of the, a lot of the hard work. Thanks very much. And now we'll move to questions.